for President Rodrigo Duterte, there will always be rape cases in a place with many beautiful women. They said that Davao had many rape cases. For as long as there are many beautiful women, there are plenty of rape cases as well. Duterte adds, women rarely agree to sexual advances on the first try. Data from the Philippine National Police, or PNP, shows Davao City had the highest number of rape cases at 42 in the second quarter of 2018. Duterte has been criticized for his misogynist remarks and making light of rape. In the wake of President Rodrigo Duterte's latest rape joke, presidential spokesman Harry Roque says the people of the Visayas and Mindanao are more liberal in what they consider offensive. Let's just say that perhaps a standard of what is uh, offensive and what is not offensive is more liberal in the South. Roque is defending Duterte from the backlash of his latest rape remark. Duterte said there are plenty of rape incidents in Davao City because there are many beautiful women there. There's a difference between sense of humor in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. People in the South, particularly in Cebu and the Visayas, they don't really take things as seriously as people in Luzon. Roque adds the president is mature enough to know when he is crossing the lines of decency. Act Teachers Representative Franz Castro lambasts Duterte, saying he should issue a public apology. Castro says President Duterte has once again reared his ugly misogynist, chauvinist head. Instead of answering the issue of rape in his city, in his country for that matter, he again resorted to victim blaming and crass, unfunny jokes. Vice President Lenny Robredo fires back at President Rodrigo Duterte and tells him to focus on fixing the country's problems instead of attacking her. Robredo says Duterte should focus addressing the rice crisis, the soaring prices of goods, and the alleged 6.8 billion peso shabu that slipped past the country's top anti-drug authorities instead of belittling her capability to lead the country. Robredo says, quote, instead of continuing to glorify a dictator who stole billions from our country, drove the nation into debt, and presided over the murder and imprisonment of thousands of Filipinos, he can work on truly unifying the nation. This comes after Duterte said he would rather relinquish the presidency to a dictator than let Robredo succeed him. You're better off choosing a dictator in the likes of Marcos. That's a, what is what I suggested. Pwede man kayong mag-success uh, constitutional succession. It's Robredo. But she cannot hack it. Filipino boxing flyweight bet Rogan Ladon is still in the running for a gold medal in the 2018 Asian Games with a unanimous decision victory against Thailand's Yuta Pong Tongdi in the semifinal round on Friday. Ladon will fight for the gold against Uzbekistan's Jayerbek Latipov Saturday. Two more Filipino fighters are slated to go for gold in their respective semifinal bouts. Light flyweight slugger Carlo Paalam will battle India's Amit Panghal while middleweight Yumir Felix Marshall will fight Uzbekistan's Israel Madrimov Friday night. Filipino stage actress and singer Rachel Ann Go shares photos from the gala performance of the cast of Hamilton as they meet Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Rachel plays Eliza Schuyler in the London West End production of the hit musical. And Celine Manuel Miranda. You say... <laughs> That's definitely not gonna happen. He did try, but I said no. While she didn't get the one-on-one -on -one selfie with the royals, Rachel did what any fan would do, zoom in and crop. On her Instagram stories, Rachel also shares a photo of her listening to Prince Harry speak just a few feet away. Rachel says she was trying to be calm. Rachel had her fair share of celebrity meetings since she started performing on West End. She met Claire Foy, Benedict Cumberbatch, Emma Stone, and Kira Knightley. Mm -hmm.